folks. I'm going to do a little walkthrough of how to get set up with the new text to video stuff, which is just amazing and super cool. And for some reason, I'm one of the only people playing with it. Want to make sure people know how to get this thing set up. Just for quick context, this thing that's open here, Stable Diffusion Web UI Docker, this is how I have my automatic 1111 thing set up so my folders might look slightly different from y'all's but in general it should be basically the same so just so you can see what that looks like I'm gonna get started so what this is doing is it's running the web UI inside of a docker container and the reason that this is a good idea is because the way that extensions work in web UI is basically just you're letting like strangers run arbitrary code on your computer so that's not usually the best idea if you're not looking closely at what you're running so I'm doing stuff inside of docker and it'll look just like everybody else's web UI okay. Spencer Sterling is the badass who made this model for us thank you so much Spencer this thing is awesome so this is the tweet where the model got shared it should be pretty easy to find if you can't find it just search for the text to video hashtag and it should be pretty far up there there it is the second one and he recommends we go here all right so this is a little deceptive as someone who hasn't been paying close attention to the text to video scene this is not the whole story this model here is an upsampler I mean, he talks about all this, you just have to read it closely. It's specifically for upscaling content made with this other model. So let's start by going here, this other model. So this is the base model that we're gonna be using to kind of start our generations. And this model assumes that we have this extension. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is install this extension in your web UI if you don't have it already. So that's, you know, copy and paste the URL, go over the web UI, click on extensions, install from URL, paste that in, click install. Now, let's take a look at the setup instructions here. Make sure we're not missing anything. Where to get the weights, haha. Next step, setting this up, this zero scope model that we're playing with is in this family of models, of the model scope text division models, and we need to set that up by first going to the original Hugging Face repository and downloading these guys. So this this file here, text to video pytorchmodel.pth, that is the same model name that this base model is going to have, and that's the same model name that the upscaling model is going to have. The way that the extension currently works is it expects the model to have this name. You can go over to this Hugging Face repository here. So now you need to download this file, this file, and this file, the VQGAN configuration and open clip. And you click on these buttons, download file, it'll download, go to this data subdirectory, and then in model scope, P2V. I had to create this folder actually, I believe. After we download these files, we begin configuration, open clip. This model here is going to be whatever I'm currently running. Now we're going to download from the zero scopes, text to video PyTorch module, text to video PyTorch module. And the way I did it, you don't have to do it this way, this is not necessarily the best way, is I created little subfolders named for each of them. My Excel folder is currently empty and my 576 five, folder is not. So that means that this is my upscaling model. See, isn't this an awful system that I have here? Don't do, don't do it this way. When I want to run a thing, I open a new window, boom. I mean, isn't this system clunky as hell, but it works, it works for me. So I go into text to video, this model's here. Let's keep an eye on our 
processes while we're doing stuff. My GPU is RTX 3090. It's a screen line down. I had a cool pop the other day. I think it was something like this one. This was a good one. There we go. Got everything set to the defaults. We don't actually want the defaults. This model is intended to be used at 576 resolution. For upscaling either of these resolutions, this is actually referring to a third model that I didn't know about. There we go. This is the 4480 resolution model. What I've actually been doing is I've just been using the 576 model Instead of generating 576, I've been generating it 448. 576, 320, is that right? There we go. 576, 320. We'll do it both ways, see what happens. Let's watch the screen line here and see what happens. Boom. So all these log messages and stuff. This is from automatic. Oh, there we go. I'm running this on an NVIDIA 3090 GPU, which is kind of a chunky GPU. All right, and boom, down we go. The reason I'm highlighting this is because the model loads into the extension, gets used, and then it gets popped right out. I'll click here to see the video that generated. Isn't that gorgeous? Now for upscaling it, I'm going to want to use the same seed that it generated at, so I'm going to go back here and figure out what seed it was running on. There's my seed. I like what I got here. I'm going to hold on to that seed. Drop it in the vid to vid section. And when we run vid to video, I'm going to use 1024 by 576, which is the recommended setting. So the only thing I've changed is the resolution and the seed. And now I'm going to go back and make sure I'm actually using the same prompt, at least to start with. Last but not least, I get to do that funny thing again. So I'm going to go in and find so I'm going to this is the one that we're currently using. I'm going to put it away. And in we go. And now I'm ready for the video to video part. So this is going to take about two and a half minutes. Oh, ha, actually, this is going to throw an error. I'll let it do that. But I forgot to upload the video here. Yeah, see, it's complaining. So there's an image to image, text to video, whatever the most recent one is. There we go. <laughs> yeah, this is the one thing that is kind of stupid about the Docker setup is it tries to be careful about permissions. It's a little too careful. All right. There we go. Now we're ready. Like I said, this is not the best system. While that's running, I'll show you the better way of doing this. That was recommended in a Twitter thread. So instead of what I'm currently doing, Here's our configuration file, and here is that text to video PyTorch model.pth. If I just change the file names and actually put the file name that I need when I need it, the probably smarter way of doing this is to futz around in the config file. And this thread. Johannes. Johannes, however you pronounce this name, thank you very much. This guy was the one who's suggesting just changing the name of the file in the config, which is a much better system than what I'm showing you here. All right, update the video. And now this is a bigger, prettier, more detailed version of the video. Now we get on to the trick that I was suggesting on Twitter the other day. You know, we've done kind of two steps of generation we did a text to vid on the low resolution, video to vid on the output of that, now to make this higher resolution, which is, you know, nice and big and pretty. And the recommendation that I had 
was to now find the thing that we just spat out. Normally I have a bunch of folders open so I don't have to click around quite so much. So I'm just using the downloads folder here because it has the permissions that I need. So now this is the new file that I just outputted. I'm not going to change a thing. I'm just going to run generate again. So now this is this file that we just generated. I just put it back in for vid to vid and I'm going to run it again. Basically this upscaling model is a detail adder you can think of it as. And so running it again is just going to add a little bit more detail. Another way you can think about it is that idea of a model adding detail is it, it's the same thing as like the reverse process of diffusion. It's inverting a corruption. So if you think of like the corrupted version of the image as being the low scale version and the upscaling model is undoing the corruption of reducing that resolution, then you can kind of think of repeatedly applying this model as similar as doing a kind of like manual version sort of of the reverse process of diffusion of like a diffusion model. So we're, we're just the same way as you would do like an image to image with a, with a starting image, we're doing a video to video with a starting video and we're just uncorrupting it and making it prettier. We don't have to limit ourselves strictly to the exact same settings here. We're going to probably want to keep the seed fix. If we change the seed, I would recommend playing around in text to vid first to kind of see what the seed that you're getting looks like because this is kind of a finicky process. But in any event, you can layer on information. So we have a new video. I am a fan. Now that we're here, we can change things a little bit. So for example, we could fiddle with the denoising strength. I recommend whatever changes you make to do them in small increments to start with, just to see what happens. Playing with anything down here is more wildcard stuff that you can do that will be kind of safer, I guess, is you can tinker with the, the prompt a little bit. And I think that tends to be a little bit more stable. Let's add into our prompt. I don't know what the right word is, so I'm going to Google around a little bit. Yeah, I want this sort of thing. Marbling, that's what I want. Shaving cream marbling. I could add some interesting textures. We loaded the video here. I don't think we actually uploaded the new video yet. It goes. Yeah, let's add some materials here. So, filler. Opal. Opal is what I'm thinking of. Opal language. Let's go to a place that's trying to sell us shit. Opal stone vocabulary. Fluorescence and opals. Yeah, I guess I'm just looking for flame opal. Yeah. So we've uploaded the new version of the video. We've tweaked the prompt a little bit. This is going to be our third upscaling run, where we did our first upscaling run on the low resolution draft, then our second upscaling run on the output of that, which is vanilla, all the same settings. Now this is our third upscaling run and we're layering on some new information in the prompt. So we added this shaving cream marbling acrylic and flame opal crystal geode. All of this is under the same seed. And there we go. You can see it's loading the models. So it loads the DAE, it loads the unit. Something that is definitely worth exploring is when you are in text to vid draft model mode, go down to image to vid. And you have the option to have a starting image, but also an ending image. So you can make it loop. Let's see what we get after adding shaving cream, the op flame opal, and shaving cream marbling. I have some new textures in here. I think I liked it better before, but I don't hate this. Let's do this. Let's try and 
So the question is, do I want these bubbles or do I want to suppress the bubbles? Because I could, for example, I could add some circular things to the negative prompt and I bet we can make all this stuff go away and it'll just be more funky streamy. And we can encourage the funky streaming with, let's say, hyperspectral as a term from satellite data. Yeah, let's try false colors while we're idea now is that hopefully these negative prompts that I've added will suppress these bubbles from popping up and uh, the river delta stuff might add a little bit more structure to uh, these interesting flow patterns but will also encourage flow patterns so I'm not going to build off of this video this time. So this is now building off of the same video that I had before. So we had some bubbles before, but they're much more pronounced now. They're much more spherical. I don't want them to be spherical like that. I like how they're kind of spiraling and swirling. So we've added swirls in there. And so I think with all of the, the mucking around with the prompt that I've been doing, I can get away with it a little bit more because I'm building off of a video to video output already. Um, so if I was changing the prompt when I was taking in the output of the, the draft output, it would probably not look as good. So I think um, at least the very first upscaling step, probably the first two, should be with the same settings. Um, at least the very first one should be. Right. Let's update the video. They still have some bubbles, but they look real different. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Loving this. So just to really emphasize the new features, which are giving us this kind of creamy, milky spreading thing going on, I like a lot. We're going to do one more round. <laughs> uh, this isn't exactly how I was doing it before, but it certainly is now. Replace. Okay. Yeah. These textures are much more pronounced. Before it was just kind of like lines. I think the river delta made them these more branching patterns. And this model likes to do these kind of lines. I think it has to do with uh, the time component. Maybe I'll keep balls and drop marbles from the negative prompt. Let's run this again. Now that I can just update video. Okay, but this looks much better. Mixing painted Yes. So yeah, magic milk, magic milk paint. Uh, but I am going to take this as the input. I like that. Replace. Drag that back over there. I found that after five or six of these, it tends to start having diminishing returns or actively hurting the quality unless you start fussing around with these settings. I think if you plug something in repeatedly with the exact same settings, it can start to kind of accumulate artifacts that are kind of attributable to those settings. All right, let's update the video. And that was the process for making this. I'll edit this down so people who just want to learn how to install this thing don't have to watch an hour of me talking. Peace.